Amen. 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 We're glad you've joined us for this good Wednesday evening service. Looking forward to a good, good church. Brother Rich will be preaching on Revelation chapter 5 tonight, so looking for a good, good service. Want to begin the service in prayer. Pray the Lord bless our worship tonight, uh, that it just be acceptable to the Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, as we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, Brother Al, would you begin our service, please? Amen. All right, a few announcements. Uh, of course, Sunday. Looking forward to Sunday services already. Uh, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock evening service. Uh, this coming Sunday evening, I'll be pre continuing uh, the book of Acts. be act preaching for the book of Acts, chapter 13, this Sunday evening. And then next Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, I'll be preaching next Wednesday night. Uh, you still got our adult Sunday school class, Brother James, online. And that's really good. And our daily with God devotions, uh, Monday through Saturday every day. So got a lot going on. Uh, but we're sure glad you joined us tonight and looking for a great service. Uh, we've got several to remember on the prayer list. Uh, it's just getting longer and longer. And uh, we want to remember all these uh, as we pray tonight. Continue to pray for Brad Burgess's uh, parents, his mom and dad. Hold them up in prayer. Uh, remember Brother Herb as you pray this evening. Linda Teasley. Uh, Carter. Carter has been transferred to uh, Mercy Hospital St. Louis. Uh, still not doing well uh, at all. Uh, Cheryl, uh, Johnny, Gene Dotson, uh, Mike and Kay, Alpha, Bobby, Jim Briley, Tom Teagues, Laura, uh, Todd King, Becky, Stephen Tiffenar, Kevin, um, Cheryl Johnson, uh, continue to pray for Sam, that's Shirley's great-grandson, uh, Haley, Bob and Joyce Muse, Bob Logan, Robert, um, Ray Ann Lee, uh, Lana, Vernon Long, uh, Tanya Williamson, uh, Howard White, Sharon, Sister Sharon's brother and all that family, uh, Tanya Treat, Brittany Burgess, uh, Philip Hurst, uh, in the hospital, Sue Stevens, uh, Glenn, and Mary Ann Roney. That's some family related to um, Gary Gilliland, and that's a husband and wife, both te testing positive for the COVID. Uh, and we got a request today. Uh, Mike Massey, his oldest son, uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident uh, yesterday. So remember that family uh, as we pray uh, this evening. Okay, so he was 24. I don't think that I ever met him, probably. Uh, but let's really hold that family up in prayer. They're going to need your, your support tonight. Pray God's comfort and blessing on them. Uh, anyone else you want to add to the list or any changes I need to make? Okay, so Todd King went home on hospice. Saw him back there somewhere. Erlene? Okay. Yes, hold her up in prayer. Absolutely. Jim. Yeah, remember Yvonne. Yvonne's not feeling well this evening. Bill? 
Remember Shirley. Shirley not doing well uh, either. A lot of requests tonight, a lot of needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's well, remember him as we pray. And sure good to see Miss Vera in church with us tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. Uh, anyone else? All right. We're glad you've joined us. We come to have some church. And uh, looking forward to a good service. Let's sing some songs. Uh, anybody that liked the arrangements for Shea Massey, he'll be laid out at uh, Copeland from 5 to 8 Friday evening and the funeral is 11 a.m. Saturday. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know, there's me no home. Now I lost my place. Heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord. I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I won't have long to stay. My work is nearly done. I'm happy now to say my race is almost run. So long my eyes have set on heaven's open door. Feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory their song of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore and i can't feel at home in this world anymore oh lord you know i have no friend like you if heaven's not my home then lord what will i do the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and i can't feel at home in this world anymore. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over Sweet by and by, we shall meet on. 
on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above. We will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet to the sky. 
when you don't understand Oh, but I'll stand on a solid foundation And I'll hold to an unchanging hand When the sun's coming up in the morning Every tear will be gone This old clay's gonna give way to glory And like an eagle, I'll take to the skies And the sun's coming up in the morning Every tear will be gone from my eyes This old clay's gonna give way Go ahead, Brother Matt. <clears throat> they nailed Jesus to an old rugged cross, his disciples staring at him. We're sure that all was lost When he cried, it is finished He bowed his head and died Hopeless men and women Walked off Golgotha's side But it's not over, it's not over As all heaven began to rise For his father was giving orders and rushing angels to his side. The Holy Spirit was descending, God's Son was coming forth, and they thought they'd lost life's battle, but Jesus won the war. world mocks God's people, they are blind and cannot see. They think we are foolish when in Jesus we believe. But one day they will miss us, for we will be called away. And we'll not feel one bit foolish as we hear Jesus say it's not over it's not over our king is going to cry Holy Spirit search through graveyards and take everything that's mine only in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we will leave this land where death reigns to ever be alive. It's not over, it's not over, our King is going to cry. Holy Spirit, search through graveyards and take everything that's mine. Only in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will leave this land where death reigns to ever be alive. Yes, we will leave this land where death reigns to ever be alive. Brother Rich, come.
come preach to us. Good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. Glad for each and everyone that's here. I truly hope you're enjoying this study Amen. we've been at for nigh on to several months so far, and hope we get it done before the Lord comes. So, if that's, okay. if that's not, that's okay. You know, that'd be be fine too. Uh, turn with me to Revelation chapter five. Glad to have Tim with us tonight. Friend, friend of mine come, loves Bible prophecy and came to set in on the, on the service tonight. Uh, I don't normally a lot of times have you stand, but I tell you what, this passage of Scripture I think is special. So I'll stand while we read the preaching of the Word, uh, the, the Scripture tonight, the first five verses of the book of Revelation, chapter 5. And I saw in the th right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong uh, as I, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof no man in heaven nor earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book, to open and read the book, neither to even look on. One of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loosen the seals thereof. Father, as we come to you tonight, we're thankful for your blessings. We're thankful for this opportunity to be in your house. And most of all, we're thankful, Lord, for your word. And pray that you just help me tonight. Give me wisdom. Give me utterance. Speak the hearts tonight. Help us, Lord, to understand your word and see the importance of this passage of Scripture. And, Lord, for one here tonight or one watching online, we pray if they have a need, they would have that need met before this service is over. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, you know, the Bible is made up of 66 books. Until about five or 600 years ago, they were, there was no chapters, no verses. They were letters, books that were written. And not until recent years, like I said, 500 years, 600 years, uh, did man add uh, uh, chapter and verse. Uh, and helps us understand a little bit, I think. But sometimes when we read it, we forget, we forget that. And we come out of one chapter into another, and we think, well, here's different, but it's a continuation. And that's exactly what we have in this passage of Scripture. Chapter 4 and chapter 5 go together. It's one statement, one view. What are we looking at? We're looking at heaven. We're looking at the throne room. We're looking at the presence of the Lord and what was going on. We looked at that last time in chapter, chapter 4. The power and the might and the glory of our, of our God on his throne in heaven. We saw the 24 elders. We saw the, the, the four beasts. And, uh, and as we go into this fifth chapter, uh, we see it's a continuation because so the first verse in chapter 1, he says, and, he said, and, I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Now, who's on the throne? God the Father. He's the one that's holding the book. What is that book? Well, back in the, the, this time, the Old, the Old Testament times, that they used, they used uh, not a book, like what we're seeing right here, or what we read today, it was a scroll. And it was a legal document. And uh, it was usually parchment, animal skin, something like that. And whenever they would make a, uh, a title, a will, 
or some kind of very important legal document, it had to be had had to be written on. They would roll it up and they would seal it. And some of the some of the old, the old Roman uh, leaders back then they they demanded it be seven times. But as you roll up the seal, uh, roll up the parchment, you would seal it. You would write on it again, front and back. You would roll it up. You would seal it. And that's what we're seeing when we look at this scroll, this book that he's talking about. It was called that was their books back then. Were scrolls. Whenever they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were scrolls. They weren't books, they were scrolls. So this was an important document. And that's one of the things I want you to keep in your mind as we look at this, this document, the seven seal, that God has in his right hand that no man is worthy to open to even look upon. You know, as, as we study the, as study the book of Revelation, as we look at this four and five, we're looking at the throne room and what's going on in heaven. Prior to the opening of these, of these, of these seals, uh, we get to chapter six, we will see that the seals are going to be open, and from chapter six all the way through to the end of Revelation, that's what this, this seven seal book is about. It, it contains all the fulfillment of all the prophecies of God. Now this is a very important thing. We just kind of read over, oh, seven seal book, blah, blah, and we kind of read over it. We don't stop and think what the meaning of this is. It's so important. It has to do with God's judgment upon this earth for the rejection of His Son, Jesus Christ. For Israel, it's not for the church. It's for the nation of Israel and the kings of the earth. So, well, well, why do, what are we studying it for then if it's not for the church? Well, I think it's very important to study and to help us know what's coming down, what's coming down the road. Now, I'm going to tell you something. In the, in, in the, just in the last few years, see things starting to happen. As I read this book, and more so just recently, as we read this book and we read the prophecies and we get, in, we get into this, uh, we're, we're going to see, I got some stuff to tell you next week, that our next time I preach, when we start opening these seals, that's happening today. Now, are we in the tribulation? Absolutely not, because the church is still here. He won't start opening these seals until the church is in heaven. He says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No man in heaven nor earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book or neither to look up thereon. You know, uh, the strong angel, probably Gabriel, he told Daniel in the last chapter of Daniel, what did he say? When Daniel, Daniel saw all this too, just like John did. But it was a long time coming yet. And what did he tell him? He said, Daniel, seal the book, close it until the end times because the time is not yet. He said in the last day, men will run to and fro and they will begin to understand. You know, not until, not until 1900 did men really start to get back in to, to, to Bible prophecy. You know, it, it was kind of a lost you know, ignored for so many years. But in, in, even in the 60s, it really took off. And one of, the, one of the guys responsible for that was Hal Lindsey and several other writers. And you know what? I, I, got, I, got, I got, a, got a Hal Lindsey's old book out, New World Coming. It was wrote in the 60s. And I read that the other day. And I sat <laughs> and I thought, my, my. You know, where we're at now, and buddy, I'm going to tell you something. Old Hal was right down the gun barrel. And what we're seeing, he, he talked about in, in his book, and he's not the only one. There's some others. I, I read after several good commentators. But as time goes on, we start to see this. Now, what did God tell us? 
He said, when it starts, it's like travail of a woman. It's like the labor pain. When it starts, it's going to get harder and harder and harder until the delivery is going to happen. You know what's going to happen? These prophecies are going to be more true to us, faster, more intense. The day's coming, folks, and it ain't long off. So we looked at this scroll. They couldn't find anybody worthy to open it. John starts to weep because he understood the importance of what was taking place here. History was beginning to unveil itself. That was prophesied all through the Old Testament and under John. He says, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open to read the book. Neither did even look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loosen the seals. Who is this? It's Jesus. He says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, <coughs> stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits sent forth into all the earth. You know, we, 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 we studied about these seven eyes, the all-seeing eye of God. He knows everything. He knows your heart. He knows your life. Also the seven spirits, I believe, also the church. And he's talked about seven horns. What does that mean? You know, as John saw this, I, I, I really don't think he saw, I think he saw an actual lamb that had been slaughtered, had been slain, and was alive. I think he saw that in, in his mind's eyes. He saw these seven horns, which always depict power. How did the baby lamb come the first time? What was the lamb, what did you do for sacrifice? You picked the best lamb, didn't you? The unblemished. What did God say? Behold my son, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the earth. He was the sacrifice for your sins, my sins, the sins of those past, the sins of those future. Covers. All we have to do is accept. He covered all of our sins. The only thing we have to do is accept it. And if you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior, then you're going to be lost. But he sees this lamb as it had been slain. I can see, I, I, I see it in my mind's eyes. It's throat cut, you know, blood on it. Representing the lamb. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now I believe he's seeing Jesus. He's seeing Jesus right now. As he comes. Do you think Jesus' marks are still there? Well, I do. I think so. Over in Isaiah, he talked about God and his glory and different lights shining from his body. I think, I think, I think of all the people in heaven, I don't think you'll have any, any, any mistake of recognizing Jesus. I believe them holes are still in his hand. I think they're in his feet. That spear mark in his side. I think he'll carry those to eternity to remind us of what we did, he did for us on the cross. I really do. But he saw this lamb, and he saw Jesus come and take the book out of the right hand. No one was found except him. The blood, the perfect sacrifice. The power. You know, when he came the first time, like I said, he came as... He came as lowly Savior. But when he comes back again, he's coming back as King as King and Lord of Lords. 
And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the forty and two elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. I think it said odors, I think it's kind of like incense. I can't play a harp, but I bet I will over there. I do lucky to play that old harmonica. Can't sing, but I'm going to sing over there. And what I like about this, he talks about the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. You know what God loves? He loves to hear us pray. It's a sweet smell to him. The prayer. Now, I did a lot of studying on this, and I, I'm going to tell you honestly, I'm not come to a total conclusion yet. He says it's the prayers of the saints. Some thinks it's the saints that are in heaven. Some thinks these are the tribulation saints. I tend to kind of think it's a combination of both. I think it's all the prayers that was before him. People asking for forgiveness of their sins. I think that's what he... God's, God answers our prayers. God's not a whole lot concerned with our little piddly problems here on earth, is he? He wants to hear one thing from us. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from my sins. There's nothing sweeter to him than the prayer of repentance of a lost person. He's, he, he's desirous for everybody to be saved. There, I've heard people say, well, he, everybody's going to heaven. Well, that's not what the scripture says. There's people who are going to turn their back on him and be lost. I think about the Old Testament saints, or the Old Testament people. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, where'd he go? He went into the earth, didn't he, for three days. What was he doing down there? Preaching the gospel. And after he came out of the grave, says, many who were dead were seen walking through the streets of Jerusalem. Well, he set the captives free. You know, he cleaned it out. Did it all come? Absolutely not. I don't think they all came. So not everybody is going to go to heaven. But he desires everyone to. That's why he came. That's why he died. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations. Everybody can be saved. That's what he came and died for. That's why he shed his blood. That all can be saved. And has made us and to our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on earth. Remember that. Where are we going to reign with him? On earth. We're going to rule and reign with him on this earth for a thousand years. Kings and priests. Can you imagine that? What did he tell us in the scripture? He said, we have yet to see what we're going to be. We ain't going to be sitting around floating on the cloud or the feet dangling off, looking around. God's got stuff for us to do. Amen. Kings and priests. Now who's that for? Is that for everybody? Church, folks. That's a special blessing for the church age. There's going to be a lot of people in heaven who came out of the Old Testament period. But I don't think they're going to have some of the blessings that we have as the church. The church is a special deal in Christ's eyes. You don't know how blessed you are. 
to be in this church age. Is there going to be people saved during the tribulation? Absolutely. Scripture bears that out. But they're going to pay an awful price. Probably with their life. But are they going to have some of the blessings that we have? No, because we trusted him by faith. Waiting on his appearing. The church has a special, special blessing. And it's hard to get that through people's head. And they reject the church. They ignore the church. And the best blessing of all is right in front of them. And they won't take a part of it by accepting Jesus as their Savior and being a part. What is the church? The redeemed. No any difference who you are. I know Catholics that I believe is going to heaven. I know Catholics that I believe is going straight to hell. I know, I know free will Baptists that's on their way to heaven, and I know some that's on their way to hell. Don't make any difference what your denomination is. The church is the, is the family of God. Those who are redeemed, those who are saved, has asked Jesus to forgive them of their sin. He's going to make his priest and kings. And I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands and thousands and you can keep on going to thousands. You know what I like about this passage of scripture? I think there's going to be a lot more people in heaven than what we think there's going to be. That's what it tells me. There's going to be a number of people in heaven that's going to be innumerable. I think some of them's going to have more rewards than others. Some of them's going to have more blessings than others. But they're still going to be there. When I hear the same with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. They're going to sing a, uh, sing a new song that they've never sung before. This book's never been opened before. It's never been handed to the rightful owner of the title of this earth. You know, when God created this earth, what did he do? He told Adam, he said, hey, this is yours. Take care of it. You name all the animals. You name all the plants. You, you know, this is yours. But Adam forfeited the title to this earth. Jesus gave it to him. But he forfeited the title because of sin. He was no, no, no more eligible. And, and one thing about this, this, this scroll, this, this, this deed, this title, that when they wrote it, they put it back till the rightful owner could come. Only the rightful owner could come and open it. Only Jesus is the rightful owner of this universe of this earth, of you and I. He was the only one that could come and open the seal. And whenever he took the book, all, all praise broke out in heaven. It says, And every creature which is in heaven and earth and under the earth, which are in, in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Bless and honor and glory and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. The Lamb. It says in the four, and a, uh, four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell and worshipped him. So, where does that put us? That puts us in a position where it's clear what Jesus is saying to us here. You know, 
He's telling us what's coming down the road. What's going to happen one day? And we get over in chapter 6, we'll start seeing these seals unroll. But like I said, the thing you have to remember is that will not happen until the church is gone. Until the church is in heaven. He said, I will keep you from that hour. What's he talking about? He's talking about the tribulation. Now, what's going to happen after the rapture? So what of the church? It's in heaven. Rejoicing. Having a great time. Mary's Supper of the Lamb, I believe, is going to take place during that, first, during that time before he brings all the saints back with him. But what about the day after the rapture? I somehow think the church house is going to be full. Dr. Ironsides wrote this, and I, I thought it was so great. He said, Sunday morning, all the churches are now full of people and every church member. Reverend Dr. Smooth of Things is standing in the pulpit overlooking the congregation with a pale face. Well, doctor, what happened? You've been telling us for the last 20 years that the second coming is false. It ain't going to happen. That there's more than one way to get to heaven. Many ways. And all the people who walked about, talked about the second coming, were just ranters and scripture twisters and didn't know what they were talking about. You've been to college, you've been to the universities, and we believed everything you said. Somebody else got up and said, my grandmother was just reading about this the other day. I was just reading about how the Lord's going to come and collect his people and take them home to heaven. I'll tell you what, I think the first few days, the first few months or whatever after the church is taken out, I think this probably is going to be true. I think the churches are going to be full. There's going to be a lot of preachers that are going to be standing in the pulpit that's going to have to account for what they've done. Not telling people that Jesus is coming. Not telling people that Jesus is the Savior of the world. I'm going to tell you what, that's going to be a sad time, folks. Now, I don't know if Jesus is your Savior. But you know what he told us? Today is a day of salvation. Not next week, not next month, not next year, not after the rapture. Well, there's going to be people going to go, go to heaven after the rapture. It's going to be hard. I, I doubt if the ones who rejected him beforehand will. I know Israel's going to accept him. And it says there's going to be an endless number who are going to accept Jesus. But you've got to remember one thing. You're going to have to do it under your own power, not the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And you may well have to lay down your life for your testimony. That's scripture, folks. We're going to get into that later. We're going to get into that later. And if you don't think that this world is getting ready for that, and there's people who don't know what is coming down their line, then you're being fooled. Tim and I were talking the other day about who, who was it took, took uh, order on a whole gob of guillotines. What's the easiest and quickest way to get rid of somebody? Cut their head off. What the scripture said, those who were beheaded for the cause of Christ. We'll get into that Next time we're going to start opening these seals. And when we do, we're going to talk about some things that's happening not in the future, but happening right now. That's preparing the way. If you don't know Jesus, you need to get in touch with him. And you need to get things straightened out.
today. Don't wait. And I'm going to tell you something. When I said something, I hope I get to finish this. I'm in it. I think it's that close, folks. When you see things that's going on in this world and what people are thinking and what they're doing, it can't be far off. It can't be far off. Fathers, we come to you. We thank the Lord for your word. Lord, we pray that this was pleasing to you. And Lord, we pray that it stir hearts tonight, cause us to realize our need for our soul salvation. This is not the time to be playing church. This is not the time to be ignoring you. But a time to draw closer. Be ready. Listening to the shout. Because we know by your word, this is nothing that I've made up. This is your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Good, good message, Brother Rich. Appreciate that. Hey, Jesus is knocking at the door. Amen. amen. He really, really is. Um, you know, at some point, uh, with all the uh, messages and devotions we're putting online, I, I've really thought I might ought to make it a devotion one day and entitle it, If You Miss the Rapture, Watch This. Because there's going to be a bunch of folks left behind. And then they're going to be seeking. And then they're going to be wondering what has happened. Might be good to leave some of them folks a message, right? But it'd be a whole lot better if they get saved now. Amen? Amen. Trust Christ as their Savior. Hey, the victory's in Jesus. Really, really is. Hey, I want to hear Amazing Grace before I go home. And we don't need the words on the screen. Most of you know that. James, sing real loud. We'll just do some Amazing Grace before we leave.